Thank you very much. Um, welcome to this debate, following what I think is the second festival screening of Stolen in Norway. Um, we have a highly qualified and, and very relevant panel to what we've seen, which I believe will be well worth listening to. Uh, we have from your left, um, Violeta Ayala, one of the directors of the film that we've just seen, who's come from all the way from Australia to be with us here tonight. Thank you. No, thanks. <laughs> then we have on the far right, Jörn Sun Henriksen. He's the president of the Norwegian Support Committee for Western Sahara. And to those of you who don't know, this committee is a small and, uh, dare I say, penniless, <laughs> but influential non-governmental organization here in Norway recognized uh, for its expertise and respected for its tireless advocacy for Western Sahara. Finally, we have Tina Davis in the middle, who is, among other things, an expert on contemporary slavery. In this capacity, Davis is a board member of the non-governmental organization called Anti-Slavery International, which is the oldest NGO in the world because the struggle to abolish slavery was what first set the whole civil society movement in motion, I might say. Um, she has, among other things, directed a film called Modern Slavery together with Norwegian Tomas Robsam. And that film won the Amanda Award for Best Documentary of the Year 2009. Yeah, good. And uh, finally, you have me to chair this debate. My name is Nils Jakob Harvitz. I'm the regional manager for East and Horn of Africa in an organization called Human Rights House Foundation, which is based at the Human Rights House here in Oslo. Among the things that we do is to co-host the Human Rights Documentary Film Festival, Festival here at Park Teatre every year, first week in February. So to all of you, please come back then. So much for the advertising. <laughs> We have uh, 45 minutes, and I'm going to stick strictly to that. Uh, I can imagine there being many in the audience with questions, comments, critical remarks. Even so, what we have agreed, uh, Film Frasseur and myself, is to let the three in the panel discuss among themselves, so to speak, but of course in front of you, to your enlightenment, perhaps entertainment, provocation, uh, for the next approximately 30 minutes before we open up for your input towards the end for the remaining 15 minutes or so. Um, what we do know about this film is that where it has been screened, it has often triggered heated debate, not only about itself, but also about the issues it tries to raise. And tonight, we shall try to shed light on both the film and what turns out to be its key issue, slavery. Um, I'd like to, to begin with you, Tina. Um, what is and what is not slavery today? Is there a clear and universally valid and agreed definition? I think the definition we used uh, for the modern slavery film was based on free, the organization Free the Slaves um, definition, which is uh, when people are being held against uh, their own will and are being forced to work with no pay and when they are uh, either um, experiencing violence or are under the threat of violence. Yeah, okay, so did that make three components, roughly? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think so. I think I gather that, yeah. good. Um, on the basis of what this film claims to demonstrate, does it amount to slavery, what we see here? Uh, according to this definition, your opinion? Um, well, what the... I mean, according to what they claim themselves, mm -hmm. I mean, they say they feel themselves as being slaves, you know? Mm. Um, there's uh, hereditary slavery in that region, uh, which is well known. And um, 
Boubacar, who you visited in Mauritania, who's the president of uh, SOS Esclavage. Mm -hmm. um, he is a slave, and I mean, the, I think there's a lot of things here that points to slavery. Um, first and foremost, the fact that they themselves say that they are slaves in the way that they live and mm -hmm. are being treated. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah, so, I mean, I can't verify it completely in the sense, but through what they experience, they experience their lives as slaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Violetta, let me turn to you. Um, your film is, is very, very honest about this whole issue that you raise about slavery going on in the refugee camps being a, some kind of a discovery to you, something you were not prepared for. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Um, from the outset, tell us, this was not what the film was meant to be about, but what was it meant to be about? Well, Dan and I went to the Polisario refugee camps in 2006 mm -hmm. to make a film about a family reunion. Uh, we wanted to share, shed some light into the human side of the, uh, the political conflict between Morocco and the Polisario. Mm. Um, Initially, you know, I come from a very left-wing background. Um, my grandfather was the head of the Communist Party in Bolivia, so I was drawn to their cause. Um, they were a liberation movement fighting for freedom. So it was a natural alliance. Um, yeah, I, in my first or second trip, I would never have imagined that this would have, could end up like this. And a big remark is that the slavery in the film is not just denounced in the Polisario refugee camps, but it's also denounced in the Moroccan-controlled Western Sahara. Mm. It's something that needs to be said, needs to be talked about it. It's, a, it's also presented in the film as a regional issue. But the film is not trying to prove anything. I'm telling you a story of what Dan and I experienced and why we believe slavery exists in the refugee camps and in the Moroccan-controlled Western Sahara. Then it's up to every person to make up your own mind. Mm. And organizations like Anti-Slavery International and Human Rights Watch, who have the experience and the financial, uh, well, maybe not, Anti-Slavery International <laughs> does not have the financial capacity, because as you know, it's one of the most underfunded organizations. People don't want to raise, people don't want to talk about slavery. Like, it's, it's very difficult to talk about this. 